Recently on my new epic educational channel called Stay Curious, I published a video where I was comparing the daily lives of people in North and South Korea. And I feel like that video turned out quite well and a lot of you guys enjoyed it as well. So now I'm making an extended version of that same video where we're comparing not eight differences, but 16. Um, let's go. Currency. North Korea's currency is the North Korean one. They have nine total banknotes that are in increments of 5, 10, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 5,001 with depictions of everyday workers, the national flower, soldiers, and of course, Kim Il-sung. The value of the North Korean one isn't as bad as many might think with 1,001 equaling 1.11 US dollars or one euro. South Korea's currency is also called one. They have a total of five banknotes in 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, and 50,000 increments and they depict things such as winter sports, nature, ancient kings and even a famous artist. As of 2020, the South Korean one is actually valued less than North Korea's with 1,001 equaling 80 US cents or 75 euro cents. Well, I guess if you uh, ever wanted to become a millionaire overnight, um, all you gotta do is take a flight to South Korea. <laughs> Sports. Just like everywhere else, North Koreans love sports. Football, volleyball, and basketball are all really popular among the average citizens, but North Korea also has a bunch of elite athletes as well. They have a total of 56 Olympic medals, 16 of which are gold. On the world stage, North Korea shines in weightlifting, gymnastics, and judo. On the other hand, South Koreans are crazy for football and baseball, but their biggest contribution to the sports world is Taekwondo, which is a form of martial arts that's now practiced all over the world. South Korea also has a strong Olympic presence with 337 medals to their name, 121 of which are gold. At the Olympics, South Koreans perform best at archery, taekwondo, and short track speed skating. I don't know if you saw this, but at the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, the South Korean government allowed the North Korean athletes to enter South Korea via the DMZ, and also all of the South Korean North Korean athletes all marched under one flag, the unified Korea. That was such an emotional moment. Airports. North Korea only has one international airport and it's very small because they only get around 6,000 international tourists per year. Because of those low numbers, the airport is very modest with just one terminal and a couple of coffee shops and stores available to the passengers. Additionally, only two airlines fly in and out of the airport, Air China and Air Korea, which is North Korea's one and only airline that's actually the only one-star airline in the world due to their very old seats and less than appetizing food. On the other hand, South South Korea's international airport in Seoul is one of the biggest, busiest, and cleanest airports in the world. It has indoor gardens, private sleeping rooms, various paws, an ice skating ring, and even a golf course. The airport receives over 50 million passengers every year, and more than 60 airlines fly in and out of it. Seoul's airport is so good that it's actually been voted as one of the best airports in the entire world every single year since 2005. Travel. North Korea is notorious for not letting its citizens out of the country. The North Korean passport is one of the rarest official documents in the world and only the most trustworthy and vetted citizens are ever issued passports for things like academic competitions, sports, and government business trips. North Koreans can't even travel freely within their own country as they need special permissions to just leave their towns. South Koreans, however, can travel anywhere they like. They have the third most powerful passport in the world and permission to travel visa-free or with visas on arrival to 170 countries. Every year more than 16 million South Koreans leave their country to go explore other places with little care or worry. Hair and beauty. North Koreans are confined to choosing between just 10 haircuts for men and 18 for women when they enter a salon and sporting a haircut not approved by the state can lead to severe punishment. Makeup is still popular with wealthy women though and Kim Jong-un and his wife are now promoting North Korean cosmetics to its citizens in order to stop people from illegally obtaining foreign beauty products. But South Koreans absolutely love beauty and playing with their style since they can do whatever they want. Hair dye, cosmetic surgeries, makeup and fashion are all giant businesses in South Korea, especially with the influence of K-pop. In fact, K-beauty is a $13 billion business and growing. I just checked that the K-beauty skincare routine is actually 10 steps, what? Uh, no wonder they're making so much money. 
nightlife. The type of nightlife Westerners are used to isn't possible for North Koreans. While there are some beer and karaoke bars in the capital city, many of them are only accessible to the elite and there are no nightclubs. But that, of course, doesn't mean that North Koreans do not like to let loose. One North Korean defector described the makeshift nightclubs many students put together where friends gather in a house to dance and listen to illegal foreign music like K-pop, even though they risk being sent to prison if they were to be caught. South Korean nightlife could not be more different. They have tons of bars and clubs all over the country, especially in Seoul. They have nightlife for everyone, from cheap university bars to trendy upscale clubs, hotel parties and gay bars. There is no shortage of places to choose from for a night out in South Korea. Okay, legend, let's take a very short break here because now I want to tell you a bit more about that new channel I created once again called Stay Curious. The whole mission of that channel is to create very short, fast-paced and fun educational videos about the beautiful world we live in. And now we're creating videos about many different countries around the world. And we also have uh, a couple about um, North and South Korea's. For example, uh, how their militaries compare, or the history of North Korea, or 10 facts about Kim Jong-un, or the history of Seoul, or quite a few other. So once you're done watching this video, please smash the link in the description box down below. Go check out, stay curious, binge on as many videos as you like, and obviously, um, subscribe to that channel to help us grow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. Cars. North Korea only has 11 cars per 1,000 people, but they do have their own car manufacturing company called Pyongwa Motors. Because most people in the country can't afford a car, there's little demand for them, and North Korea only produces 0.05% of what the United States produces in a year. South Korea, however, is home to two of the largest car brands in the world, Kia and Hyundai. Not only that, South Korea has the sixth largest automotive industry in the world and boasts 475 cars per 1,000 people. Um, this is quite the difference compared with North Korea's 11 cars. Housing. Just like with jobs, all housing in North Korea is assigned by the government since they own all the land. Most people are assigned small living spaces in the countryside with no heating or plumbing and the few who are close to the regime get to live in nice apartments in the capital city. South Koreans, on the other hand, can choose where they want to live and most South Koreans choose to live in city apartments. Seoul actually has some super decent rent prices for a developed big city though and in 2020 you can get a 45 square meter furnished apartment for just $500. $40 per month. It might not seem too cheap right now, but if you actually compare this price with uh, places like Japan or Singapore or Hong Kong, it is really affordable. Holidays. Believe it or not, North Korea has 71 public holidays, though most of them commemorate the ruling political party and the supreme leaders. The most important holidays in North Korea celebrate the birth of the two former leaders, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. By comparison, South Korea only has 12 public holidays. Some holidays like the Lunar New Year even give them three days off. But unlike North Korea, they don't celebrate the lives of individual leaders and instead have holidays such as Independence Day, Constitution Day, Memorial Day, Liberation Day, and many others. If you ever want to experience some really amazing Korean traditions, visit Seoul for the Lunar New Year. Um, you won't be disappointed, I promise. Media. Even though North Korea's constitution says that its citizens have freedom of speech and press, that is very much not the case in practice. North Korea's media is tightly controlled and journalists can only speak favorably about the country. Even a small typo can result in a journalist being imprisoned or sentenced to hard labor. The state even owns all the TV stations and controls what can be broadcast to the nation. In contrast, South Korean media is free and open to everyone. Every citizen has freedom of speech and freedom of press is practiced. The world has taken notice of South Korean entertainment so much so that the first non-English language film to win the Academy Award for Best Picture was 2019's Parasite. I have to be honest here for a second, uh, watching the Parasite sometimes gets really difficult and quite emotional, uh, but it's definitely a very good movie. If you haven't seen it, uh, definitely, definitely watch it and let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. Healthcare. North Korea has a pretty terrible healthcare system. They claim to have free healthcare, and while that may be true on paper, their healthcare system is not easily accessible to all citizens, especially those living in the countryside. Healthcare is really only available to the rich in the cities, but even their hospitals are still severely lacking, as a lot of them operate without heat or electricity, and doctors often have to perform surgeries using battery powered flashlights. South Koreans also have free universal healthcare, but it's different in that any citizen can access it not just the rich. South Korea is home to some of the best medical facilities in the world and their hospitals are very well equipped. 
I've already mentioned this in the shorter version of this video that I made for Stay Curious, but a really curious thing here is that one thing you can find in the North, but not in the South, is this Chinese carrot flavored toothpaste. Um, wow, I'd love to try that. Supermarkets. In North Korea, supermarkets are almost exclusively found in the capital city Pyongyang, where only the elite members of society live. We know very little about the lives of those in the countryside, but we can guess that they don't have many, if any, supermarkets because, according to the United Nations, 70% of the country is food insecure and many rely on what they can grow or trade. On the flip side, South Korea has an absolute abundance of supermarkets that are well stocked and full of all kinds of Korean and international products. Food. Because of the rampant food insecurity in North Korea, many families have to live off of kimchi, corn, rice, and cabbage. Meat is a lot less common in most diets because it's so expensive in North Korea, but they are sometimes able to enjoy pork, rabbit, and seafood. Beef is pretty much considered a delicacy by many North Koreans because they almost never have the opportunity to eat it unless they're part of the top 1%. The same cannot be said about South Korea, however, because it is a country that loves its meat and it's very affordable. Many of the most popular South Korean dishes include beef, chicken, seafood, and of course, pork. Yeah, I also have to add that uh, there's literally zero vegetarians in South Korea and because of that, traveling there for me was so difficult. Restaurants. Restaurants don't exist in the North Korean countryside, of course, but the elite who live in Pyongyang enjoy a small variety of restaurants. From North Korean restaurants with staples like cold noodles and rice with chicken to delicacies like dog meat and even foreign cuisines like Italian pasta and Japanese sushi which help cater to foreign tourists. North Korea even has their own brand of beer. When it comes to restaurants in South Korea though, I don't even know where to start. South Korea is often voted as having some of the best food in the world. From street food stalls serving stewed pork feet and fish cakes to restaurants specializing in barbecued meats, raw fish, noodles, and dumplings, there's no shortage of absolutely incredible foods to choose from. The only thing South Koreans are apparently not too good at is making beer. Yeah, there's actually this really funny story in South Korea where a South Korean man got into quite a bit of trouble when he publicly stated that North Korean beer was better. Schools. All education in North Korea is mandatory until the age of 17 and their education system is heavy on censorship and propaganda. For example, every classroom in the country must have portraits of the two former leaders hanging on the wall and the students are taught to worship them as gods. North Korea also has universities but only the rich kids get to go. However, South Korea is the most educated country in the world with 70% of the population having received some form of tertiary education. But despite the excellent quality of education, the system is hyper competitive and that has a negative impact on many of the students who spend as many as 16 hours a day at school and prep classes. Military lives. The North Korean government conscripts all male citizens and many female citizens after they finish high school. Men have to serve in the military for 10 years and women for 7. The soldiers have to face harsh training conditions and many of them, especially the ones stationed outside Pyongyang, face severe hunger. According to one North Korean defector, the soldiers are given either two potatoes for a meal or raw corn and rice. As a result, most soldiers are malnourished and are shorter on average than their southern counterparts. Speaking of South Korea, they also conscript their citizens, but life for a South Korean soldier looks very, very different. South Korea keeps their military very active because of the constant threat from the North. Because of that, training in the South Korean military is very, very intense. They even have their new soldiers feel the effects of a chemical attack by having them enter a room filled with painful gas without masks. Every time I hear about these differences, I feel really sad for all the millions of people living in North Korea who just can't really live a free life. I really hope that changes sometime in the future. Do you think it will? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, before I end the video, I want to ask you once again to smash the link to check out Stay Curious in the description box down below. Watch as many videos as you like. Once again, let me know what you think about the channel and uh, help us grow. Thank you so much. See you next time.